I asked Professor Gray what teachers need to know about grammar. She emphasized some of the characteristics of grammar and ways of talking about it. Let's listen. What's the most important thing for teachers to understand about grammar? There are two major ways of thinking about or approaching grammar, and one is prescriptive grammar. So the idea that we can talk about grammar um, from the perspective of what language users should do with language or how we should use grammar. But an alternative approach is a descriptive grammar, and that means exactly like what it sounds like, where we want to describe how language users actually use language. And much of that means describing the grammar that these uh, language users are using. When we teach grammar explicitly, we have to negotiate between descriptive and prescriptive grammar um, because we do have to teach rules, but we also want to teach people to use language in a way that's natural and authentic. Uh, another issue that is related to grammar instruction is the issue of explicit and implicit knowledge. So as language users, we have a lot of implicit knowledge about how the grammar of a language works but we can't always explicitly state that knowledge. Uh, and so we have to be able to begin to explicitly talk about the, the grammar and the structures of a language. A third important thing about teaching grammar um, is that in order to fully address grammar and grammatical structure is that we have to pay attention to both form and function. Um, form refers to the actual structure or formation of words and phrases and clauses. Uh, and we have many forms in English, and, and teaching grammars mean, means teaching how to control or how to use those structures. Uh, for example, the words, the tasty cookies, is a noun phrase because it has uh, the noun cookies in it. And that's the form of this phrase. However, we won't get very far in explaining how to use English if we don't also consider the function of words and phrases. Uh, we can talk about the grammatical function of particular forms or how that form relates to other words or phrases in the sentence. So for example, the tasty cookies could be the subject, like the tasty cookies are on the table, or it could be the object of the verb, I love tasty cookies. Uh, but in addition to that kind of local function, we can also talk about a broader or a bigger function. And this is what we call the discourse function. It's about what the grammatical structures are allowing us to do in the language. So for example, we might talk about passive voice, and the, a bigger function of passive voice is to allow us to focus less on the person who is doing the action of the verb. A final thing that I'll mention is this idea of variation in grammar. Uh, based on very large studies of authentic language, we know that in different situations, uh, speakers and writers use grammar in different ways. So the grammar that I'm using to talk to you today is not the same as the grammar that I would use in an email or in um, writing an academic paper. And we know that when people have to learn how to use language in different situations, they have to learn how to control a large range um, of different grammatical streaks structures. And this is the concept that we call register variation. So learning uh, to speak a language or to write a language also means learning how to produce these different structures in different contexts. Professor Gray emphasized that there is a lot that teachers should know about grammar. One is the ways of describing grammar. Is it descriptive grammar or prescriptive grammar that we're talking about? Ways of knowing grammar. The students have explicit knowledge of grammar or implicit knowledge. Then she talked about the two faces of grammar, its form and its function. She also talked about the scope of grammar, sentence versus discourse. And finally, the fact that there's variation in grammar. <laughs>